Dante Foss to welcome to Creative Limb Studio. Welcome back, everybody. I can't believe last week I forgot to say Happy Father's Day to all you papas out there. Dads, you're awesome. We had a really nice day. It was, it didn't rain. It's rained every day since, but <laughs> no, it was really nice. I made lasagna and mom cut up a big old salad and we had uh, garlic toast. And then I made chocolate delight. Everybody has had this recipe. I don't know if that's like the technical name of it, but it's where you make like that shortbread at the bottom. It's just flour, butter, powdered sugar. No, flour, butter, and pecan. It tastes like a pecan sandy. And then you bake that and let it cool. And then you take cream cheese and powdered sugar, mix that together, put that layer on. Then you put a layer of chocolate fudge pudding on. And then you put a layer of whipped topping on and sprinkle the rest of the pecans on top. And then refrigerate it till it's super cold. I made it two days in a row because last Saturday we went to some friend's house. And so I brought that as a dish to pass while it sat outside a little long. And it kind of got mushy and stuff. And there was some, because my mom was like, she was going to go to the party. Her and Jerry were going to go, and then they decided not to. And she said, oh, I hope there's some of that dessert left, because she really wanted some. <laughs> so I made it the next day. That way she could have some. And I don't normally make a dessert. We're not big dessert people. I mean, do we like it? Yeah. But we just don't. It's it's funny that, I, that I'm not, because my dad, being from Missouri, like that's what, that's what they did after dinner. You had dessert some sort of dessert and my grandma was always making something sweet you know so i don't know we just never adopted that into our lifestyle so we had the all the kids here grandkids eric had to work though poor guy he works third shift like i think three days or four days a week i think and then he cuts hair you know at his business the other days he's just working himself crazy and it, it makes me sad. We don't see him very much, and I know, I know he's gotta be exhausted. So, um, anyways, uh, Kevin got a JBL boombox. JBL is a really good brand speaker. It's as good as Bose, really, as far as I'm concerned. I don't really know the technicalities of either one, you know, to compare them. But it's really good. I mean, Kevin's band uses JBL speakers for, you know, playing in bars and playing out places. So, you know, it's good. And then we had the little JBL clip where you clip it on your belt loop. And when you're out in the yard, you can play the Bluetooth, you know, like Pandora or Spotify, whatever you use and play your music. And that's this really good sound quality. Anyways, he was looking for something that was larger that we could use out of the bonfire. And, uh, Ghosts now? Oh. oh, geez, Athena. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and he wanted something waterproof because in case it rained or he left it out there and the dew got on it or something. So anyways, this is a waterproof JBL. It was very expensive, but I thought, you know, it's kind of a family gift in a way because we all like to sit around the bonfire. So anyway. Yeah, and it was a great day. And then um, Jerry got, he bought a, mom and him went to Best Buy and he bought a drone. That thing is the coolest. I'll insert a video at the end, but it is really the coolest thing. I've never seen a drone in person. And how accurate this thing is and how fast it can go. It can fly up to five miles away. And you know, it's got the camera on it so you can see like 
I want to use it and try to see wildlife because we have, you know, a river around here and everything. But I mean, it, it's his. I'm not going to use it. I want to get Kevin one, <laughs> but um, maybe at Christmas time. Oh, and, this, and when it's snowy, I would be even more awesome because without all the leaves, you could see the wildlife better. They'd show up better. So anyway, super cool. If you've never seen one, it is something to behold. So anyway, yeah, great Father's Day. Then uh, Wednesday, we got our new floor put in downstairs, and I'll insert a picture of that. That, that looks so good. Hold on, I gotta put insert, I've gotta put these things in or I won't remember to do it. <laughs> but yeah, it looks so nice. It basically doubled our living space. I mean, we it was livable before, but it just didn't look that good. So now with the floor in, you know, we're inching our way towards having the whole downstairs completely finished and renovated, and it looks really nice. Thursday, we had the grandkids over, and who they ran me ragged that day. Uh, they did both have a nap, though, because Bree said they really didn't sleep very well the night before. But it rained. We thankfully took them outside before their nap because it rained the rest of the day. But we, they played in the sand, and I threw the ball for Athena in the pond. She got to swim a little bit. So I couldn't believe it. The kids didn't ask to swim or to get in the pond. Didn't even want to get their feet wet. Like, I didn't ask them because if I asked them, of course, they'd say yes. But they just were happy playing in the sand. And then after their nap, it rained. Like I said, it rained the rest of the day. I mean, it's been raining like crazy. It rained all day Thursday. Or, yeah, half day Thursday, all day Friday. And when I got up this morning, it was still raining. By the way, today is Saturday, the 26th of July, of June. <laughs> oh, June, my heavens, Betsy. And it is uh, Floss Tube 124, I believe, yep. Yeah, moving right along on those Floss Tubes. Anyways, we're supposed to get rain like every day for the next seven days, but we needed it. We're actually still in a drought, even though we've had constant rain, like a ton of rain. It's just... We had such a dry spring that the water level is low and our pond is suffering. And even with all that rain, you can't look at the pond. You can't really tell. You would think there'd be runoff, but there's not because the water is just being absorbed into the ground. So, okay. Um, things that I did in my business this week. Ooh, I did a lot. I, I finally, like, finalized all the giveaways and things that I'm doing for the Silver Needle Retreat. I have everything ordered. I also finished the cover and directions for the sampler that I'm giving away for the retreat. It's going to be exclusive to the retreat um, attendees for a year and then I can release it. And then I fully, fin not fully finished. I did the covers and the directions for two samplers that I'm releasing at Needlework Expo at the end of August. But as a perk to the attendees of the Silver Needle Retreat, they'll get to purchase them at the retreat. So I got all that done. That was huge. And I also got the Patreon uh, charts designed. And yeah, so it's been busy. I've been working on not as much as I need to, but I've been working on the Punch Needle for the fall, Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine, due July 1st. Yeah, which is next weekend. So I'm going to be punching my little brains out um, the rest of today and Monday. I should be able to get it done Monday. And then I have one more bare calendar image to paint Monday or Tuesday. And then that will be done too. So then I can kit up everything for silver, silver, silver needle retreat. And then my biggest deadline after all of that is done is my fabric line which is due August 1st so after the silver needle retreat I'll have a couple weeks and that's what I'm going to just hunker down on and focus on I have a lot of the sketches done but I have to paint everything and I have to make the coordinates you know using photoshop and make the repeats and all that so it'll be yeah so it's going to be insane Kristen's coming into town on next Thursday this coming Thursday and she'll be here till Monday. So anyway, it's just, just a lot. So when August hits, I'm going to be like, yes, because I'm going to have all my deadlines and that everything's going to be 
I mean, I still have the bare calendar to paint, but the deadline for getting the cover and the two inside spreads done is... Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just rambling now. I'm trying... Because you know what? I have this constant reel in my head because I have to remember... I mean, I have it written down, but I have to remember what's due when, and, you know, it's like a constant thing in my head. So I wanted to give you guys a huge, huge thank you. <laughs> I titled my last video Over the Knots because I was just getting very frustrated. And so I appreciate everyone's tips on how to not get knots, how not to get knots. And what has worked for me is just wetting it. It's, it's debatable, I guess, on whether to use the beeswax. Some people, a lot of people suggested it, but then there were some people saying that, you know, it's not in archival something. I don't know. So I thought, well, I'm just going to stick with wetting it. Of course, you know, you have to make sure that it's color fast. Otherwise it could bleed onto your linen. So, you know, there's all these things to consider, but it has really helped me by wetting it first. And um, again, just letting it hang and untwist every so often. I think too, I was using it too long of a piece of floss because I'm used to punch needle and when I do punch needle I mean my floss is like probably three foot long and I so I can just punch 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 but um I think I was using probably 18 inches to 24 inches long and someone said about 15 inches would be sufficient so I'm using a shorter thread and that helps too so thank you everyone I really appreciate it I just this community is amazing okay announcements so yeah, I'm really excited. On July 10th, which is a Saturday, from 1 to 2 at Keepsakes in Cincinnati, Ohio, I am going to be there for a meet and greet. Kevin and I are going down to pick up the trunk show that was at StitchCon. And so she has it on display at the shop, and I'm going to be there for a meet and greet. And it's only an hour long, and the reason is because we have to hightail it back to Finley, Ohio, because I have a framed piece. The piece that... Uh, the sampler that's for the Silver Needle Retreat is getting framed. So I have to pick that up on the way back. Anyways, it's going to be a, a whirlwind of a trip, but we're going to get it done. And so, yeah, I'm really excited. The display looks amazing. Barbara is so good at displaying things. Oh my gosh. Awesome. So yeah, that's exciting. And I hope you guys, if you live close enough, I hope you can come. I would love to meet you. It'll be fun. It's going to be a blast. So that's really exciting. I finally did a blog post, you guys. I did it this morning. So I have it updated and I added those recipes. The recipe for the lemon artichoke chicken with feta cheese and capers. And then I added the uh, egg roll one with the links to the sites that the recipes that I got, where I got the recipes from. Jeez, you know, giving credit where credit is due. So yeah, I finally got that done. I'll have links in the description box below for that. And as far as the blog goes, you know, I'm doing floss tube every week. I'm doing create tube on my other YouTube channel every other week. So bi-weekly, which I'm going to put a link to that below. It's, it's a really different way of doing it. Like here for floss tube, what I love about it is it's conversational. I feel like I'm talking to you guys and I'm sitting down and just telling you about my work and my life where Create Tube is more behind the scenes, showing me actually doing the things that I'm talking about. It's really in just silly, goofy stuff I try to put in there. So it's a lot of fun. It's entertaining. They're a little bit longer because it's two weeks worth of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. I have changed over from doing all of my video editing from iMovie, which I've done since I started, and it's very user-friendly. I've switched over to Final Cut Pro because I bought Final Cut Pro when I got my new laptop and I'm, I've had my laptop for almost a year now, maybe even a year, I don't know, but I have never used Final Cut Pro. So I'm learning that and I'm learning how to insert some fun little quirky things and I, I'm a newbie and it's very obvious, but I'm trying and it's fun. And anyway, so I'll have a link below to my Create Tube. And then one more thing, Blackberry Primitives. I love that linen, but it's just not for counted cross stitch. It could be for uncounted cross stitch. Like I said, it would be fun to just freehand some cross stitching. It would be good for embroidery. It's awesome. I've seen it used um, 
Susan Stanley. Is it Stanley or Stadley? I gotta write her down. I wanna link to her. Um, I think it's Stanley. Yeah, link. Okay, um, she, oh, this blows me away. She went to Mackinac Island for a needlework, what was it called? I forget what it's called. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I live in Michigan. I never even heard of this thing. But she took a class from uh, Manamasi. Um, what's her first name? You guys know who she is. I do that every single time. I used to teach youth group at church with a Katie Bonamassi. So I get her mixed up with Maggie Bonanami all the time. Oh my gosh. That's so annoying. Anyways, she, I'll put it here. Gosh darn it. Anyways, she is very well known for the wool applique. Well, she uses blackberry primitive wool and she also uses the linen to put the wool on. So I, and I didn't realize that until I saw Susan's video, her latest floss tube video, and she's working on a piece that she had um, done or started or learned about anyways at this event in Mackinac Island. So I'm checking into this Mackinac Island thing because I'm like, I think it's every spring that they have it. I can't believe I hadn't heard of it. If you've heard of it, let me know in the comments. I'm just curious if anybody even knows about this. But I'm like, I totally want to go to that. Oh, Mackinac Island is super cool anyways. But to go there and learn and make projects with some of the most, you know, well-known people in the industry, it'd be awesome. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So that's it. I guess, well, what was that? I guess that's it. That's it for my announcements. Okay, I only had one question. Terry asked, did you ever chart the animals from your fabric line called American Harvest? No, I haven't. American Harvest, if I have any pictures or find any pictures, I'll insert them here. But it was a fabric line to design 15 years ago, probably, under uh, South Sea Imports. And it was hard, it was really cute. It was farm animals. It was farm scene, all of the, all of the farm things. And they were bringing things to harvest, like to the market. And you know, the, the cow was carrying a bucket of apples and he had a thing over his back and he was carrying milk. The sheep was pulling a wagon full of, I think apples or something. I don't know. The chickens, you know, were carrying a little cart full of eggs and just really fun, whimsical things, making it like the animals were harvesting and taking to market. And so the farmer, I mean, I know we need farmers and stuff, but you know, you know what goes on in this head. It's whimsical. <laughs> but anyways, it was a really cute fabric line. And then Blossom Bucket also made a lot of figurines out of those images. So I have not done any cross stitch with them, but I really would like to. I have I need to clone myself. I don't even like, I shouldn't even said that because cloning is to me disgusting, but um, it was a joke. It's just a joke. Uh, but I just really, I just really don't have time to do all the things I want to do. Yeah. So that was it for Q&A. Okay, so whips. In CW Live uh, last this past Tuesday, we started a new angel project, and then we'll finish it up this coming Tuesday, and then that's the last lesson for session five. And then I'm taking all of July off. Y'all know why. Uh, and then it will resume again August 3rd. So, yeah, let me show you that. So this is Ariel. So we got a huge, huge start on it. I was really pleased. We worked a couple hours and this is how much we got done. So this Tuesday we will finish her up and I'll show her to you in the next boss tube. Get a little close up. Okay. All right, so for my whips for needlework, I am working on a punch needle for the Punch Needle Primitive Stitchers Magazine, the fall issue, so I can't show that, but I can show you the progress I've made on my on my girl 
you guys, I got a lot more done than I thought I would, which really pleases me. Well, I guess I'll just hold it up to this. All right, so I'm doing pretty good on her. I have her dress all done. Uh, there's a mistake. I know you're shocked, but, and somebody said, don't worry about mistakes. It makes it your own. Yes, definitely. I'm not worried about mistakes, but because this is going to be a model, you know, I want it to be as close to the chart as possible. And then my sweet friend, Jerry Inglis from Canada, she is one of my model stitchers. She mentioned for the hand, instead of recharting the design, just stitch over that flagpole. I'm like, oh, there you go. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I had to put these two little buttons in, and since I had that color in my needle, I went ahead and used it for the 1776, so you can see how much better that shows up when it's stitched with, I think it's 613. So I'm stitching this on. So I'm stitching this on Weeks Dye Works 40 Count Cocoa. Shoot, I never remember if it's cocoa or mocha. Hold on, I gotta look. Yep, cocoa. 40 count cocoa by Weeks Dye Works. Let me see. Are they... It's one Classic Color Works, three Weeks Dye Works, and four DMC. And I'm using the same colors. So this, this piece, let me sit back down. This piece is like <clears throat> one of eight or nine. I can't remember how many I have, but I'm designing or I'm creating a book. All of the other designs I'm having my model stitchers stitch. This is the only one I'm doing for the book. The book will have eight or nine designs. Like I said, I can't remember exactly. And the book will be, it will show them all stitched, fully finished and full, full color. So we're going to upgrade a little bit <laughs> compared to what I normally, not, not normally, but for the Celebrate book, you know, that was not in color. And uh, you can go to my website and see everything like as a computer generated piece. I'll have a link below. I don't even know why I'm talking about that, but basically just to say that from now on, any of the books I do will have the full color picture of the chart within the book. Okay, then finishes, I'm going to insert a picture of the finished November painting that I did for my bear calendar. I got that done and then Monday I will be doing the third one and so I'll be done with that for a while at least. I'll be painting on that again in August. And then fully finishing. Okay, so last week I finished this chick loves flowers well i fully finished it right before i started recording this vlog too so i also went ahead and recorded myself finishing this because i did it a little bit different than i normally do and i wanted to share that process with you so that will be uploaded here to this youtube channel shortly so i used oh god lady dot creates texarkana Oh, I can't remember. Let me go grab it. Okay, Dames of the Needle, Tex Arcana Sage. Mini pom-pom around the edge. And then I adhered it to this cool, grungy-looking little frame. I love it. I love how it turned out. It'd be so perfect in a kitchen. So this image is, or this design, is from my Celebrate 15 Years of Needlework Punch Needle book. I'll have a link below to my Etsy shop. Let me write that down. Um, I'll do the Celebrate Book cross stitch and then the Celebrate Book punch needle. So I'll have a link to each one of those. All right, we're on to haul. And this week's haul, Week Styleworks came in, guys. I love it when my floss tree is full. <laughs> Let the designing begin. That's how I feel. All right, let's show the gorgeousness. 
Oh my goodness. So beautiful. Red Rocks Peacoat and Gunmetal. Oh, so beautiful. This one we have Swamp Water, Indian Summer, Crimson, Cayenne, and Whiskey. Look at how gorgeous. Okay, on this one, we have Rum Raisin, Chris's Bonbon, Dolphin, Tin Roof, Charcoal, Confederate Gray, and, and uh, Beige. I almost said Sage. Oh, I think I got too many on it this time. Da, There we go. So Crimson, Chris's Bonbon, Tin Roof, Dove, no, Dove, and then Tin Roof. I don't remember. So beautiful, these colors. So yeah, last week I got in my Classic Color Works. This week I got in the Weeks Dye Works. Let the designing begin. All right, guys, that is it. We're moving on to our giveaway. I lost my handy dandy notebook. Okay, so last week you had to say July in your comment and you, if you did that, you were entered into the drawing for the Summer Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine and I will insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, let's see who wins this week. Da, 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 da. Deb J. She said, I do start stitching for Christmas early in the year, just not in July. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your comments and congratulations to you, Deb. Let's get back to the program or whatever it is. Not really a program. What is it? Floss tube. Let's just get back to floss tube. Congratulations, Deb. If you could please email me at TeresaCogat3 at gmail.com and give me your address, I'll get that in the mail to you ASAP. And, you know, again, if you already have that copy, you can gift it to another person or pay it forward somehow. Okay, so this week, my question for you is, do you want to learn punch needle? Is that something that you have on your horizon? I won't be offended if you say no. Don't worry about that. Trust me. We want it. Like, I want to do punch needle cross stitch will applique and quilting like I want to do all those oh and of course painting that just goes without saying that's my first love <laughs> but I want to do all those things but the reason I'm asking is because so the key word is punch needle and then the prize for next week I'm giving away three of my punch needle tutorial so I have a tutorial and I have a link below to the punch needle tutorial so for the tutorial it costs $37 but you get that much free PDF downloads of punch needle. So it offsets the cost, okay? There's tons of information out there about how to do punch needle. I have, if you go to my, this channel here, Teresa Kogut's Creative Whims, and you go to my playlist, I have punch with me videos. I have a lot of videos about punch needle that will be very helpful to you. So you don't necessarily have to take a tutorial. The other thing is Vonna Pfeiffer just did a lot, like she did live videos, I think she did three of them, showing every aspect of punch needle that you can think of. So that was a gift, that was a beautiful thing to do. So let me write that down so I can link it below. And it, you know, not just me, not just Vonna, but other people have information out there on how to punch needle. So that's why I wanna give three of these away. And that's also why my tutorial is like you can download the PDF so it offsets the cost. So anyways, there's a plethora of information out there for you if you are interested in learning how to punch needle. I, I really love punch needle and I'd like to discuss it more in my channel because there's not a lot of channels that do that. It's mostly about cross stitch. So, you know, I, 
I'm going to look for like maybe one week I will give, like I'll go through the whole punch needle process, but each week I'll just focus on one aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like compare needles one week. Um, to talk about like just tips and tricks that might help you. One week I'll talk about finishing. You know, just stuff like that. And just throw that in every so often so that I was going to say I could do it every floss to talk about punch needle in some sort of way. Why not, right? Why not? Because I know a lot more about punch needle than I do cross stitch or quilting or wool. Okay. <laughs> and I never did get a hold of the attic about seeing if they had a silk conversion for uh, All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna. It's so funny. You know how like when somebody buys a car, you never noticed that car before, but once somebody buys it, you see it everywhere. I am seeing Barbara Anna's All Creatures Great and Small. I'm seeing it on Instagram like crazy now. It's just so funny how that works. So yeah, that's my one that I am going to stitch of somebody else's. I might be 90 when I'm done with it, but I'm doing it. So anyway, that's it, guys. So just make sure you leave a comment with the word punch needle in it. Let me know if you're interested in punch needle or not. And then I'm giving away three of my tutorials. Three people will get free access to my tutorial. I guess that's how you'd say it. Anyways, that's it for this week. I got a busy road ahead of me. Like I said, Kristen's coming into town on Thursday, all the flowers that she, she's doing the flowers for this wedding. So she's coming in town because her niece is getting married. So she's doing all the flowers, she's having them delivered to our house Thursday. She's doing all the flowers and the bouquets and the boutonnieres and all that. Friday, I don't know if she's doing them here. I don't know, really. I need to get with her on, on all of that. And then I'm going with her to the wedding on Saturday. And then Sunday, we're having like a 4th of July party, not a huge party or anything, but just having... Uh, Kristen and her daughter and her daughter's new husband, they are going to be here. I say new husband as if she had an old one. No, but, you know, I went to Tennessee for Gabby and JT's wedding. Well, they're going to be up here, and we're just going to have a cookout and hope to get it doesn't rain because it's supposed to rain, like, so much this coming week. Anyways, I think that's it. I think that's it for this week. So thank you all for being here and spending your time with me today, and I wish you a very happy week. And I will have a floss tube before the 4th of July. So I guess I don't have to say happy 4th of July yet. Okay. Anyways, don't forget, create every day. Bye. You might be a redneck if you want to grill down below under the deck when it's raining. You use harps to keep yourself dry. And then you bring the kids outside and they play in their little puddles. That are forming on the top. Rednecks are smart. There you go. <laughs> Is that fun? You ready to go in? Hey, puppy. He's got it on you right now. Hey, you can record, you can... Right, come here. Look at the blades in here, though. Oh, yeah. That's, That's cool. crazy. Huh. That is the coolest thing. Boys and their toys. Hello. It really does create a nice breeze. Yeah. <laughs>